Now some people will say that there are variants in the Bible and there are variants that cause the Bible to be untrustworthy. Now there's a problem with this. Now I think the Bible is a very trustworthy book. Uh, when it comes to textual integrity, the preservation of the words as they were written, I think it's extremely trustworthy. And I think the same about the Quran, that it is a very trustworthy book. The words that Muhammad dictated to his scribes are the words that we have in the Quran for the most part today. They're very trustworthy. But let's look at the history of the Quran and see exactly what has happened. You see, when Muhammad revealed the Quran and his disciples were writing them down, the words of the Quran, they would write them down on leaves, on, on bones, on whatever they had to write down the words as they came to Muhammad. These leaves and bones were, and whatnot, were never collected during the time of Muhammad. They weren't collected until afterwards when Muhammad had died. Abu Bakr commissioned a group of people to go and collect everything and write down what Muhammad had said. Muhammad said, if you're going to learn the Quran, learn it from these four. And he gave the name of four men. And he started first with Abdullah ibn Masud. He said, this is the man to go and learn the Quran from first. And then Salim was mentioned, Muad bin Jambal was mentioned, and Ubay ibn Gab. Now if you go to Ibn Masud's Quran, you see that it is quite different from today's Quran. In fact, it only has 111 chapters. Surah Al-Fatiha is not included. Surah Al-Falak is not included. And Surah Al-Nas is not included. 111 chapters. And yet Muhammad said, this is the man you should go to to learn the Quran. That's found in Sahih Bukhari. The first verse of Surah Baqarah contains the phrase, Zalik al-Kitabu la ra'iba fi. This is the scripture of which there is no doubt. Yet Ibn Masud, who is the Prophet's favorite teacher of the Quran, along with several others, recorded this as Tanzil al-Kitabu la ra'iba fi. This is the scripture sent down of which there is no doubt. At the end of verse 198 of Baqarah, Ibn Masud included the phrase Fi Mawassam al-Hajj in the season of pilgrimage, which isn't found in today's Qur'an. Similarly, in the present Qur'an, Surah Al-Imran, verse 19, reads, Inna dina in the lahil islam The religion before God is Islam. But Ibn Masud's text had the word al hanafiya instead of the word Islam. One could go on and on to state many more of these minor variants. Indeed, there are many such variants between the most ancient mushafs or manuscripts of the Qur'an from Mecca, Medina, Basra, Tabqapi, Tashkent, variants recorded by Muslim scholars of the Qur'an. While early Muslim and Christians accepted this as inevitable and wrote freely about it, some modern Muslims have attempted to deny this and cover it up. One of the other four men that is mentioned by Muhammad, his name is Ubay ibn Ka'b. Not only is he mentioned as one of the four people to learn the Qur'an from, he's also mentioned as the best reciter of the Qur'an. And when you go to him, he has 116 chapters in his Qur'an. He has two chapters that are not included in the Qur'an that we have today. So among the people that Muhammad has chosen as the best teachers of the Qur'an, they don't even agree on how many chapters to include. One says 111, one says 116, and in our possession we have 114. And these are serious differences. <clears throat> and yet I, as an investigator into the text of the Qur'an, will say the Qur'an is very well preserved. The words that are there are the words that Muhammad had spoken. And I say the same thing about the Bible. Yes, there are some points where some, some phrases and whatnot had been included that shouldn't have been, and they are now known to not be included. But this doesn't take away from the trustworthiness of the Bible. The Bible is still extremely trustworthy. Just as the Qur'an is very trustworthy, so is the Kitab al-Muqaddas. And therefore, I don't cast any sort of accusation either against the Bible or the Qur'an. I say their texts are both very trustworthy. But if you level one set of accusations against the, the Injil, then you have a much harsher problem with the Qur'an. And I suggest we not do that.